want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, welcome to Inspired. My name is Mark Bunn and today we're going to be looking at why happiness is becoming the new workplace revolution. Not only that, we're going to invite you to the happiness revolution, to join that revolution and find out why in just a few minutes a day you can become happier and how that happiness can actually transform your business success. So we're going to start with a little bit of background. My fascination has always been in the area of health and natural health and how we can improve performance and business outcomes by looking after ourselves first. Many years ago, I finished a Western health science degree and probably like you and many people in our world today, at the end of that study, I was quite confused. It seemed that every week there was a new study coming out that was different to the one before. Should we eat meat? Shouldn't we eat meat? Should we eat dairy? Shouldn't we eat dairy? Should we exercise at a low intensity for a high period of time or at a high intensity for a short period of time? It was quite confusing, a lot of contradictory advice, and basically I was pretty frustrated with the whole situation. It was at that time that I actually went to Southeast Asia. I was on a holiday and also working for an aid group in Cambodia. And what I did is I went out into many of the little remote communities. Some of the communities where they hardly had the shirt on their back or the roof over their head, they were that poor. But something struck me about these people, and that was they were happy. They had big smiles on their faces. And I thought, what do you got to be happy about? But they'd give you their last grain of rice. There was this feel of community and love and warmth. I came back to my country, Australia, where people have fancy cars, big houses, great jobs. Everyone's stressed, depressed, overweight, diabetic. And so this really intrigued me. And so what I started to look at was these Eastern traditions of healthcare and performance. At the time, all I knew about the Eastern cultures were that they were very good at fitting 25 people on the back of one motorbike or creating curries that could burn holes in your underpants. But what I found out was that they had a very rich wisdom of how to be healthy, how to live life to the full and enjoy robust health while doing that. And so what I want to talk to you today is about how that can affect business. Because basically the little model I want to go through now I think really turns things on its head in terms of not only health and performance but as we'll see in a moment, our business success. It's my belief, coming back from these cultures and studying them and researching them for many years, is that our present day focus on health actually for many people today makes them more stressed. You think about it, we're overloaded with information on how to be healthy. You know, we're going to get 10,000 steps and we get really stressed if we only get 9,800 steps. And we sort of try and walk around the bedroom six or eight times to try and get our 10,000 steps. We go to a party, we're having fun, and we go have some cheesecake and someone points out how much sugar's in the cheesecake. And we all get told about how many hours of sleep we need to get. We get bombarded with information on how to be healthy so much that I think many of us feel guilty about what we're not doing and in turn... It creates stress. And we know, obviously, from the last 20 years of research, the effect that has stress has on our health. It creates the exact opposite, ill health. So it was interesting when I started to review these long-living, healthy cultures. And in fact, I devoted the entire first chapter of my book to what they focus on. And that is happiness, emotional health. They don't go about their day counting calories and analysing good fats and bad fats and talking about antioxidants. They get up, they go about their day, they work, they feel fulfilled, they come home, they spend time as a family, community, singing, dancing. dancing. So their focus on happiness in turn as a natural byproduct actually creates health. The whole essence of what they do is happiness first. When we're happier as a byproduct, 
we become healthier. And so I was really delighted about 12 months ago to come across a gentleman by the name of Sean Acor. Sean is a happiness guru. He hangs out with people like Oprah Winfrey, goes on her shows, and he has a fascinating, fascinating insights into this and how it applies to business. Sean travelled around the world for many years, conducting research in about 45 different companies, in different countries and different schools. And what he showed is that just taking a couple of minutes a day to do activities that create more happiness in our lives translate into the most phenomenal, important business results. And we're going to have a look at a couple of these right now. Number one was his research on what he called the happiness advantage, when we can get into a state when our mind and body are in a positive, happy state rather than a negative or a neutral state, a happiness advantage, we are 31% more productive. We have 37% better sales rates. In terms of diagnosing and accuracy, we are 19% faster and more accurate. And this is not to mention benefits in terms of enhanced creativity, greater stress resilience, and all-round well-being. Sean says that every area of our business results are improved by being happy. And just as I found in terms of health, the basic bottom line is that we have the formula for success back to front. What we commonly do in business and life is what? We work harder. We try and get ahead. We try and get better income, a job promotion, beat our sales targets. But what Sean says is that it doesn't work. Because even if we reach our target, we just change what the target is. We get a higher sales target. We change our KPIs. We get good grades at school. We want to get better grades, go to a better school, get a better job. And so happiness is always over the cognitive horizon. And we actually never get there. What we have to do is we have to reverse the formula for success. Be happy first and success is a natural byproduct. So what I have a look at now is really just to drill down on some practical things you can do and we can do on a daily basis to make this happen. I'm going to look at th today five key happiness tips that translate into business. Number one is gratitude. You've probably heard about gratitude of late. It's becoming very, very um, well-recognised tool for success. There's some research done in 2003 by Emmons and McCulloch. And what they showed is that people that have a daily happiness journal and record that each night before they go to bed or first thing in the morning, significant improvements in general well-being. They sleep better. They have reduced pain and they're able to handle change better. There's also been research on what's called functional MRI studies that actually pick up brain activity and that when we are grateful or experiencing gratitude, it actually stimulates certain areas of our brain related to pleasure centres. In case of Sean's research, what he found is that people that would record three new things in their life each day that they are grateful for was the foundation of the research results that he came about. So what he would get them to do is over 21 days record three activities or things in their life that they were grateful for each day. And the 21 day period was very important because that's the time it takes to reset or retrain our brains to see positive rather than negative. Because let's face it, for most of us, our brains on default, we see the negative. We see what's wrong with the world, what we haven't got in our life, what we haven't done on our to-do list. But actually focusing on what we're grateful for, what's good in our life, often journaling about what's positive that's happened in the last 24 hours, starts to train our brain to see the positive. And over time, particularly a 21-day period, We've retrained the brain successfully that that becomes our default. And this can really transform the way we live. 
the way we see our customers, our clients, our energy levels, and can in turn transform our whole business outcomes. So I'd really encourage you now to maybe even stop the tape right now and get out an exercise book or maybe go online and use what I call, or what's called the five minute journal. That's what I use each night to do my gratitude activities. And maybe write down three things you're grateful for in your life right now. And To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.